Um, hello guys, I I want us to go through two examples regarding motion in two and three dimensions. A movie stuntman is to land on the roof of the next building. Is he going to make the jump if you consider the analysis given in the diagram or figure below? First of all, if you look at the movie stuntman, this is him right on a taller on a taller building and he is about to jump to another building of a lower height with a velocity of 4.5 meters per second. The top of the lower building to the top of the higher building is 4.8 meters and then the, the horizontal distance between the two buildings is 6.2 meters. So the question says is he going to make the job given these parameters. Our x naught is the initial horizontal position is zero. Our y naught also which is the initial vertical position would be zero. First I want you to consider the horizontal equation that gave us regarding motion in two and three dimensions. We have x minus x naught which is final position on the horizontal minus the initial horizontal position will give us v naught cos theta multiplied by t. We have v naught is the initial velocity, theta naught is the initial angle made with the horizontal while t is the time we would require to make the jump. So what are the parameters we do have? From here you know our V naught is 4.5 meters per second as given in the analysis here. Theta naught is going to be zero because it's standing on the horizontal. So the angle is making with the horizontal is certainly zero. Our initial position with respect to vertical axis of course is zero. The final position will be minus 4.8 meters. Now the question is why is it minus 4.8 meters? All right, is jumping is jumping down. So its movement is downward. And I remember telling you when we were dealing with projectile motion that when your movement is downward, you, it's going to be negative. So that is why we are representing y as negative 4.8 meters. So from what you can see here, we have our theta naught as zero. We have our v naught as 4.5 meters per second. So what we are really looking for is x minus x naught. The only thing that is going to delay us from finding these horizontal distance to know if he is actually going to make the jump is this t so let's try to find t first and then we'll move on from there in finding t we're going to make use of one of the equations one of the vertical motion equations i gave us in one of the previous classes you can see we have y minus y naught equals v naught sin t naught multiplied by t minus half gt squared y minus y naught is minus 4.8 like i explained here y naught is 0, so we have minus 4.8 minus 0, that gives us minus 4.8. 4.5 multiplied by sine 0 multiplied by t. And because sine 0 is 0, everything here is going to disappear. Minus half, 9.8 meters per second squared. Our acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. In some cases, they would give you an acceleration due to gravity of 10 meters per second squared. So, whatever they give you is what you're going to use. 9.8 or 10. If nothing is given to you, you can assume any one of them to solve problems like this. So, we have minus half, 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by t squared. Okay? So, this has become 0. So, we are left with t squared equal to 4.8 multiplied by 2 divided by 9.8. How did we get this? We just make t squared the subject of the formula here. Yeah, if you do that, you multiply 4.8 by 2. If you cross multiply, you have 4.8 multiplied by 2, all divided by 9.8. And that eventually gives you t equals 0 0.99 seconds. So it will take this movie stuntman 0 0.99 seconds to jump from the, top, from the top of this building to the top of the lower view. Now that we have our t and we have every other thing for this expression, we can now go ahead and find our x minus x naught to see if the stuntman is going to make the jump. x minus x naught is equal to v naught cos theta naught multiplied by t, and that gives us 4.5 multiplied by cos 0 multiplied by 0 0.99. Cos 0 is 1, so eventually what we have is x minus x naught equal to 4.5 meters. Now, 4.5 meters is less than 6.2. Where did we get 6.2 from? 6.2 is the horizontal distance between the two buildings. Anyone that wants to make this kind of a jump must exceed 6.2 meters. If you have anything less than, if you cover a horizontal distance, if the stuntman covers a horizontal distance less than 6.2, that simply means he may not get to the top. He will not get to the top of this building. So the best the minimum he can do is to have is to cover a horizontal distance x minus x naught greater than 6.2 if he's going to make this jump. And since 4.5 meters is less than 6.2 meters, it simply means he is not going to make the jump. Your recommendation would be 
do not jump. That solves these problems. Let's try to solve the second question. It says a baseball player throws a baseball at an angle of 30 degrees with a speed of 20 meters per second. If the receiver is 30 meters away from the player, at what speed will the receiver have to run to catch the ball? The first thing you want to do here is to create an imagination, present it in a diagram. If you do that, this is what we have, okay? A baseball player throws the ball at an angle of 30 degrees. So let's assume a baseball player is standing here. He throws the ball with an initial velocity of 20 meters per second as given us here, and then he throws it at 30 degrees. So the ball travels until it falls down. If the receiver is 30 meters away from the player, there is a receiver here that is going to catch the ball thrown by the player. The receiver is standing somewhere here, 30 meters away from the player before the player threw the ball. So here is the receiver, and then this is 30 meters from where the baseball player is standing before throwing the ball. So the question is, at what speed will the receiver have to run to catch the ball? So this receiver is supposed to run to get to this point to catch that ball. We want to ensure this receiver catches that ball and he has to be at a particular speed to catch that ball. Otherwise, he's going to do it. So let's try to solve this problem. You know that the initial horizontal position of the baseball player is zero because he's standing here and then the, the initial vertical position is also zero okay now we know that our average velocity which is the speed we're looking for is given as the change in the horizontal position divided by the change in time it will take the receiver to run delta r is the horizontal range or horizontal distance that the receiver would have to cover to catch the ball and then change in t or delta t here represents how long you would have to run for him to catch the ball and then bar b would be the average velocity with which he has to run to catch the ball okay so once we're able to apply this expression properly we would have succeeded in solving this problem let's go on ignore this negative sign here forget about this negative sign it's not supposed to be here this is just 30 meters so forget about this negative sign so the horizontal range for a projectile motion is usually given as r equal to v naught squared over g sine 2 theta where v naught is the initial velocity our g is the acceleration due to gravity and theta is the initial angle via which the ball is thrown v naught is 20 meters per second so we have g is 9 as 9.8 here in some cases it may be 10 we have our angle is 30 if you plug all of those here you get r equal to 35.34 meters it simply means that the horizontal range the baseball is going to cover is 35.34 meters. Once we know that, all we need right now is to find the time of flight, which is t, the time it will take for the baseball to get to this particular point. How long will that be? We know that our x minus x naught, if you consider the horizontal equation for projectile mode, for projectile motion, x minus x naught equal to v naught x multiplied by t, where v naught x is the initial horizontal velocity and t is the time, and then our x minus x naught is the horizontal rate for the entire journey. So if we make t the subject of the formula, you divide both sides by v naught x, this is what you have. If you insert all the values that we have already, our x minus x naught as obtained as for r here is 35.34. And then we have our V0, which is 20 cos 30. V0 is 20 meters per second. And I remember we have already dealt with how to find vertical component and horizontal component. So all you need to do is just find the horizontal component of 20 meters per second. And then that gives you 20 V0 X cos 30. And that's 20 cos 30. So if you multiply everything out by plugging in all the values you have your time t equal to 2.04 seconds taking it a step further all we need to do is just plug in all these values now that we know that t is 2.04 seconds we keep that somewhere we know that the horizontal range is 35.34 meters as obtained and then we know that the receiver is 30 meters from the guy that treated from the player that treated the ball that treated the ball so we just subtract 30 meters from 35.34 meters to know how much distance the receiver still has to cover. So we have 35.34 minus 30 meters and that gives us about 5.34 meters. That is the time that the receiver has to cover in 2.04 seconds. So if you pick these two values here and bring them in here, that means our change in R will be 5.34 meters 
delta t will be 2.04 seconds. If you plug in those, our average velocity of the receiver will be 5.34 divided by 2.04, and that gives us 2.62 meters per second towards the positive x direction. So it simply means from the question where they asked us at what speed would the receiver have to run to catch the ball, he has to, he has to run at the speed of 2.6 meters per second if he is going to catch the ball. All right, that solves this particular problem. See you in the next video and have a wonderful time watching the rest of the videos in this channel. Don't hesitate, subscribe to this channel if you have not done so yet and let your friends know about the good things that are happening on this channel so they can also benefit from it. Thank you.